The Supermarket Memoirs No Deal Written by Creepy Geeksta There's nothing there in the dark that's not there in the light. That's what I always believed until I bought that place. I never believed in ghosts or spirits or weird energies or anything paranormal, but I do now. Hello, I'm Catherine, Catherine Cartwright. I bought the property here, a place called Barnaby's, an old grocery store. Used to be until a freak storm hit, but that's a different story. I'm originally from Southern California. Yep, I'm a SoCal girl. My friends call me Kitty Cat. You know, as in meow. Plus, I sometimes make a purring sound when I breathe. It's a medical condition I've had since I was younger. Anyway, that's not important. I moved here about eight years ago. I used to work at my father's metal building company. But I've always had an interest in movies. I love movies, any kind of movies. Action, adventure, comedy, drama, romance, you name it. I've always wanted to own my own theater. So I moved out here to pursue that dream. And I did it. Anyway, so I now own Cartwright Cinema. We're a small multiplex movie theater company. I own a small theater a few towns over and I was thinking of branching out. When I saw the property was up for sale, I thought that it would be the perfect location for another theater. And it was the perfect location. But it was not the perfect property. Anyway, part of the agreement I made with Mr. Barnaby when I signed the contract was that if any weird or strange things happened, I would write it down and give it to him. When he asked me to do this, I thought, why not? Nothing's going to happen. That stuff's not real. Boy, was I wrong. Anyway, let me start from the very beginning. As I said earlier, I was thinking of branching out. So I grabbed my laptop one day and started to search properties for sale throughout the state. I came across that property as a result of a computer glitch. I started to type properties for sale and before I could even get the word property typed out, that listing popped up. That was odd, I thought. I never even knew that the place existed. Anyway, the property was in a good location, the middle of town a high traffic area that had an extremely low price. It was a developer's dream. Yes, the building was damaged and the grounds were torn up, but since it was an old, all-brick building, it was nothing that a mason and a landscaping team couldn't fix. Anyway, I called the realtor at the number that was listed in the ad and I agreed to pay the asking price without even seeing it in the first place. Well, besides the picture and the ad, that was a bad idea. The realtor called me back a couple of days later and said that the owner had accepted my offer and asked if it was possible that we all meet and sign the contract the next day. I agreed. Actually, it's called a land contract. For those of you that don't know what a land contract is, it's a contract that is drawn up, usually by a realtor or an attorney, sometimes just between the buyer and the seller, that details agreements and conditions for purchasing a certain piece of property. Anyway, the next day came. We all decided to meet up at noon at an old gas station in the next town over, but that's a totally different story. I arrived first and went inside to get an energy drink. The cashier kind of creeped me out a little bit, so I got out of there as fast as I could. Anyway, the realtor arrived next in his shiny new Cadillac Escalade. It must be nice. I'm still rolling around in a 98 Dodge Caravan. Anyway, Mr. Barnaby was the last to arrive. He said to call him Pat, but it's a respect issue, so I prefer to call him Mr. Barnaby. Anyway, he came rolling up in an old bright purple short bus that he had converted to his own personal RV. That thing was cool, besides the color. 
It looked like a... like a big Barney bus. I wonder if his color choice had anything to do with his last name. You know, Barney, Barnaby... I know, anyway. He let me check it out after we signed the contract and said that he was going to do some traveling just to get away from everything. If I knew then what I know now, I would have gone with him. Anyway, we discussed all the conditions and agreements, made a few changes, which included a 48-hour return clause, which meant that I could return the property to Mr. Barnaby within 48 hours of purchase if I chose to do so. It was his idea because, in his words, you have no idea what you're dealing with. I just blew it off. Anyway, we finally agreed on a contract. Right there in the middle of the parking lot. The price never changed, though. We both signed the contract on the side of the bus. The realtor witnessed it. I gave him my cashier's check and he gave me the deed to the property. And then the deal was done. The realtor gave us each a copy of the contract and then got in his car and left. Mr. Barnaby and I talked for a while. He's a really nice guy. Anyway, let me tell you all about this bus. Not that it's of any relevance to the story, but like I said, this thing was cool. We talked for about half an hour as he explained everything he had done. He had taken out all the seats, put a plywood floor down, and then put a yellow carpet on top of that. He framed the whole interior in two-by-fours, put insulation between the wood and covered the walls and the ceilings with drywall, and then painted it a mint green. That wouldn't have been my color of choice, but it's his bus, so okay. He had red curtains on the windows, a gray futon bed, a large black dresser with light blue coffee pot, a white microwave, and a little 13-inch brown television set with a VCR hooked up to it on top, and a small black refrigerator on the side of that. Also, a small white potty chair in the corner. That's kind of gross, but whatever works for him. Yeah, it looked like a box of crayons had exploded in there. Anyway, his power source was a power strip connected to a car battery, connected to the original battery. He said that as long as he drove it for about half an hour each day, he could keep both batteries charged enough to run everything for a while. Anyway, I'm getting way off track here. So, back to the story. After saying our goodbyes and exchanging cell phone numbers in a friendly gesture, Mr. Barnaby hopped into his bus and headed south. I jumped in my van and I headed north and made a beeline for my new property. I was so excited. I arrived at the address about 20 minutes later, and I must say, the picture in the ad must have been taken right after the storm happened, because it didn't look anything like that picture. It was far worse. The winter months had not been kind to that building. There was some sort of black fuzzy stuff growing on the side of it. The entire roof was caved in, as well as the top part of the building. There was no way to fix that place, I thought. I was going to have to tear this whole place down. Now, for some strange reason, something told me to go inside. I don't know what it was, but I just felt that I had to. That was a decision I would later regret. I opened the door, which was still in pristine condition, which was very odd to me. Anyway, I opened the door and I stepped inside. And as soon as I did, it was like I stepped into a time capsule or something. The store was in full operation, fully intact and open for business. What the what? I thought. I stood there in shock. There were people in there, shopping, employees everywhere. The roof was back on. The lights were on as well. As 80s top 40 hits played over the radio, it was all business as usual. How could that be possible? I don't know how long I stood there, just watching. Suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, at the entrance to the hallway that led to the bathrooms, I only know this because the sign hanging from the ceiling said restrooms with an arrow pointing up. Anyway, I saw an old Indian medicine man dancing around and chanting. 
I don't know what he was saying, but he started making a pushing motion with his arms in my direction. After each time he did this, he would slap the front of his thighs and then do the pushing motion again. I'm starting to freak out at this point. He did this about three or four times, and then suddenly I began to feel lightheaded. I mean, really lightheaded. And uh, eventually I passed out. I woke up half submerged in this wretched smelling, fungus infested, freezing cold water. I opened my eyes to see five Native Americans in a circle staring down at me. It looked like that straight out of Compton album cover by NWA, except with Indians. Yeah, I'm a huge Ice Cube fan. I have all of his albums and I've seen all of his movies. But I must say, that day was not a good day. Anyway, I closed my eyes again and I screamed as loud as I could. I opened my eyes once again and they were gone. And so were all of the people and the beautiful, pristine store. What had just happened? What, what is going on in here? I laid there on the floor, which was covered in about a foot of this nasty, wretched water. I stared up at the sky, because the roof was no longer there. I sat up to see that the interior of the building was totally demolished and falling down all around me. Light fixtures were hanging by their wires off the steel beams. There were twisted chunks of metal lying in front of me, being only what I can assume were cash registers? Pieces of wooden shelving were floating in the water. Cans and bags of all kinds of different products were floating in the water as well. I felt something hit my right thigh. I looked down and saw a severed hand. I jumped to my feet and screamed like I was losing my mind as I ran out the door soaking wet. Two boys that looked like they were about 12 to 13 were riding their bikes past the building as I came out screaming. They crashed into each other as they stared at me, running in a soaking white t-shirt and jeans. I guess I really gave them quite a show. How embarrassing. Anyway, I hopped in my van and called Mr. Barnaby, and I told him what had happened, and that I was invoking the 48-hour clause. The deal is off. I wanted my money back, and he could keep that place. I swear that I could hear the corners of his mouth rising up to form a smile as he nonchalantly said, Okay, I thought you would. We agreed to meet at the realtor's office the next day, where I handed him back the deed to the property, and he gave me back my check, and we shook hands, and I left. I was done with that place. I did decide to honor the agreement about writing down anything weird or strange that happened because I feel that this story should be told. Anyway, about two weeks later, curiosity got the best of me and I decided to make the drive back down there. I wanted to take a selfie with the place that changed my whole attitude about the paranormal. I'm no longer a skeptic. That stuff is real. Anyway, I drove down there and stood on the sidewalk across the street with my back to the building. I pulled out my cell phone from my pocket, turned on my camera app, reversed the camera to shoot, and I took a picture of me with that dilapidated building in the background. I put my phone back in my pocket and hopped in the van and then drove home. After about two hours, I finally got the nerve to look at the picture, and what I saw terrified me to the point of tears. Yes, it was a picture of me with the building in the background, but on the grass surrounding it were transparent images of Native Americans. They were everywhere. That was about six months ago. Today, right before I started writing this, I received a call from Mr. Barnaby. We talk every now and then. Anyway, he said that someone made him an offer that he couldn't refuse and that he wanted to invite me to the grand reopening of Barnaby's happening next week. Who knows? Maybe I'll go.